Welcome to the Casual Cook Show. Today we have Tom Wolpat on the show. Tom, peace. How are you? I'm good. Tom just got done doing a show. We caught the show. We've actually seen you perform a few times now, and uh, I love the uh, the album Wolpat that you've been promoting for oh, the last year, year or two. Um, tell me about that album. I know you got some originals. You got covers, like you got a Bruce Hornsby song on there. What do you got on that album? Oh, we got a bunch of different stuff. Um, you know, Bruce, we, we covered actually the way it is, but we made it a little bit of an R&B feel to it. And uh, there's John Hyatt tune on there that's really good, a Paul Simon tune. Um, we just had a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, there's a song called Empty by a guy named uh, Ray LaMontagne or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it, it, that, was, that was an eye-opener for me. But the John Hyatt cover, I think, is probably my favorite cover on the record. So your first record that you put out was 83 and it was called Tom Wopat. Yeah, right. So do you feel kind of like full <laughs> with, with 35 years later I Wopat? Think, I, think, uh, I think I'm going to do another record this year and just going to call it Tom Wopat again. I don't know. <laughs> you know, just because it's, I'm going to cover stuff like, uh, we're going to do that uh, James Taylor tune that we did, Copper Line. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a nice Awesome. One? It's such a nice groove. I don't know. So what is Copper Line? I was, trying, I was listening to you tonight sing the lyrics. Copper Line is like the name of a it's like the name of a of a, a hollow, you know, like oh, I get you. like one of those kind of box canyons that they have in North Carolina. Hercules and a hognose snake. Hercules is a dog. Uh huh. Yeah. And then there's a snake. And the hognose snake. Wow. Well, the dogs always get into the snakes, but no, I I just think, you know, James writes stuff that's so evocative, mm -hmm. and it's there's specificity to it, and yet there it's a there's a, it just really creates a mood. And you know, the groove of that thing. He did a, a tour and an album with a guy named uh, Goldings, Larry Goldings, piano player. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just amazing. That's, that's really the, we cop that kind of. Um, I mean, I can't play like James, but to, to finger pick a song for me is, I don't do that. And it was one that I just, I just really, really love the groove of it. It's funny you, you bring up James Taylor because on our show <coughs> 20 years ago, we had James Taylor. We went to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame the day he got inducted, and McCartney inducted him, and we got to go. Oh, Jesus. The Castle Cook Show got to yeah. be there. So I'm watching all these reporters in the room, and they're asking this, these questions, these same questions over here. So when's the new album coming out? Next year. What will it sound like? Well, it's got sound a, like the another old new album. one. He does now, yeah. yeah. But he says it's going to sound exactly the same as the other album. Like he was so like he got really. It was like these people, these reporters, ask the same questions. It gets old. <laughs> it does. So tell me about uh, County Line. That was a movie that you did last year. That was awesome. You played a sheriff. Yeah, I played a sheriff. It's I, I tell people it's kind of like Walking Tall, mm -hmm. the Buford Pusser movie, and it's a you know. It's a guy who loses his job and his wife in the same month, and then a year later, uh, things have kind of gone to crap in his in his county. So they kind of prevail upon him to put things back in order. And you played and, a really good heart attack. Oh well, I had a pretty good heart attack there. Yes. Well, <laughs> thought, the guy scared me scared me to death with that shotgun. <laughs> it was a good movie. No, nah, it's a, it was a nice piece. It was done by the Inspiration Network, so we didn't get to cuss at all. But. Um, I had a lot of fun. They were really a good group. Now, tell me about this really cool show you were on a, like a month or two ago. You were on Madam Secretary. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the final season. Yeah. So, Taya Leone, right? Right. So, so, tell me, like, you get a call one day and they say you want to play a senator on Madam yeah. Secretary. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So, how did that go? So you They went say, to you know, you'll get so much for, you know, you got a couple days of work. And I worked one day with her and one day with Tim, Tim Daly. Yeah. And it was a, it was a lot of fun. I hadn't done any TV in a long time. And uh, they they run a nice show. Well, you did uh, a few years ago, Blue Bloods. Yeah, that's that's a great show. And uh, you, you bet, I, I saw some stuff you were on even back in the '80s when you were on Murder She Wrote. You did an oh of God, that. yeah, I was on Murder She Wrote. I was on Fantasy Island. Fantasy. Okay, tell me about that. Every actor in the world got to do that. I mean, well, that was kind of awesome that you were on that show. I was part of the the flashback. It was a guy who was trying to find out about his father in the Second World War. And I was his father, so I was a, the leader of a, a flight a squadron of, of fighters. So, it, you know. Did you get it, to meet Ricardo? Oh, sure. And Irving, I knew quite a bit. We, we had the same manager for a while. That's so, cool. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you know, TV is TV. 
I, I don't mind doing it. I don't. I don't have any real desire to get in another series, and and they wouldn't. You know, at my age, the way that things run, it's not like I'd be featured. If somebody came up to me with a featured role to do that, I would do. But I mean, to get called and to be on a show that's as popular as Madam Secretary, yeah, yeah, I still feel good. That was cool. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, the first you were the first thing on television that you did was was a soap. Uh, I guess probably. Yeah, I mean, I was on the soap for a couple of days and walked in, walked out of the room to go look at a birthday cake and it's the last you saw of me. I was there for two days or something like that. I, I, you know, back then, when I first started in, in New York, I, I did some commercial stuff mm -hmm. and, and I did a, a couple of little TV things. But then I got cast off Broadway pretty quick. And I was actually on Broadway within six months of being in New York. And you've been nominated twice for a Tony. Yeah, yeah. So what were the what were the two times in the '90s and in the first? Uh, well, the, the, the Annie Get Your Gun with yep. Bernadette. I got nominated for that, and then there was a show called A Catered Affair, and Harvey Firestein wrote the book for it, and uh, I got nominated for that in 2008. But, you know, it was nice to be nominated. I hated be, hated losing. I'm. They say nomination's the important thing. That's bullshit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not that I know. But so, so tell me about that. So people, you know, you watch the Oscars, you watch the, you know, watch those award shows. You're sitting there, and they have the four or five nominees. What are you feeling in your stomach I'm that just, night? Uh, you know, I, I thought I'd win, especially the first one, especially Annie Get Your Gun. I thought I'd win. Do you have a speech ready, or were you going to wing it? Nah, I could, I would wing it. Yeah. I mean, you know, Bernadette was right there, so that's pretty easy. That's true. I got to open that show too. Yeah? Yeah. It's a cold open. So it's like the 1999 Tony Awards. There's no business like just cold with no note or anything. They were supposed to give me a note from the pit, but I didn't get it. So I pulled it out of the air. <laughs> Tell me about your singing. So you. you Obviously, it's 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 a passion. I mean, watching you in, in, in your, in when you do your concerts, I can't tell what your biggest your love is because you're doing some stuff from the '60s that you grew up on. You're doing you know show tunes. You're doing um, like swing stuff. I do anything. I do anything that moves me in a certain direction. I mean, the the American Songbook stuff. I mean, some of that stuff. The lyric is so good. I mean, there's reason it's American Songbook. Mm -hmm. You know, those are some of the best songs of the, of the 20th century. Um, more and more, I do more pop stuff, like the Johnny Mitchell tune. And the stuff that was on Wolfpack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some of that, and, I, you know, I do whatever moves me. I, I think, like, I'll do um, 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover. I love that song, you know? And I'll do anything that, that I can relate to the lyric in. And some of it, you know, some of it's just foolish bullshit. You right. Know, some, like twisted. I wouldn't but, say that. What a great, but what a great li lyric that is, though, too. My analyst told me that I was right out of my head, and that's purely she wrote that, um, taking the melody totally from a jazz solo, and I don't know what the jazz solo is. That's Annie Ross who who wrote the lyric to that. So you know, I do stuff that. It gives me a vibe. The Joni Mitchell gives me a vibe, you know? Um, my songs, I find a place that I really like in them to do what I do. I like things, we skipped one tonight that I was gonna do Someday Baby, the Delbert. And that's just, you know, that's a kick-ass groove. That's a, that's a country blues song. And we haven't, uh, this is like the third gig I've done with, uh, with Mark. And so we got, we have things we have to be Piano player extraordinaire. Uh, he did a really nice job. Um, and it's not easy because we do such a wide range of material. You know, Rolling Stone. Right. But it's a great song. It is a great song. Now listen, you started out in the 80s and you had you had legit hits on the country charts. Yeah, uh, we had top I mean, 20 stuff. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, you had you had stuff that was great. And uh, But you, you kind of just, when was it that you said, eh, I mean, what got you into country? Well, I'll tell you what, country at the time, was, was M.O.R. When I got into recording, it was like right after Urban Cowboy. So country was middle of the road music then, you know? 
if James Taylor would have come along there in the 80s, or Carol King, or Joni Mitchell, they might all have been country people, right. you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, and it was a natural fit for Dukes. Right. And John had some success there. John had number one songs, a couple of them. But uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed writing some of that stuff. I had a couple, I had a top five hit with an Earl Thomas Conley song. Um, but not, when I... Not Enough Love was, no. was another one that was... Oh, God. Isn't that a good one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think that did much. See, I think, you, like, I, I think you poo-poo some of that stuff you did. Not. Well, I think, I think no, there's also, stuff. there's also, I, I did a gig over in Jamestown, and this guy had put together a, a track of stuff from all the old records, and there were songs on there, I go, oh, shit, I forgot about that at all together. I forgot about that. There's some good stuff. I'd like there to really like, revisit some of that stuff. But when I did... Annie, get your gun, and they asked me to do like a Sinatra-ish record. The Still of the Night was yep. what I did, and I did it with Russ Teitelman, and they spent a quarter million dollars on it. So that's a really lush and 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 beautiful record. And the more I worked on it, the thing was, actually, between us, I've had four record deals, never made a dime off any of them. Really? Yeah. So then I started making my own records in 2005. The Arlen record was my first record. I spent $25,000 making it and I probably made it 25 over what I spent on it. And I've made money on every record since. Because you can control it. I, I own them. Right. I make them for two bucks a piece. <laughs> I can sell but he's a cheap, he for... sells a lot of stuff for 10 bucks, folks. I, it's, <laughs> it works for me, I don't care. You know, the more I, the more CDs I get out there, like a place like this, if I sell 30, 40 CDs, if I come back here at Christmas time, you might have 100 people in here. Mm -hmm. Ah, Grandma, she's dead now. No, actually, she's in Florida. No, wait a minute, she's dead. But she would have been very happy with the Casual Cook Show, and I wanted to stop and tell you about our sponsors for just a minute. You know, I don't think it's often that a person who's doing a TV show actually knows the people who are sponsoring personally. I've been going to Dr. Campbell since, well, 1999, so for 20 years I've gone to him. And whenever I've had an issue, or even when I don't have an issue, I get checked up by him. I swear by chiropractic care, and the best chiropractor around is Dr. Campbell, and he's right in Dunn's Corners across the street from Walmart. 322-8822 um, is his phone number, and I recommend Dr. Campbell highly. He's worked on me, my wife, my children, and he's done a great job. What do you think as far as, you know, if you had to pick, say, all right, I could be on stage, I could be, you said TV series isn't your favorite thing, or I could be in a blockbuster movie. Where's, where's your passion? Uh. The movie stuff is great because it's, you know, you, it's, you, it's a one-hit wonder, you know. You go in there, you do your thing, and you're done. Mm -hmm. um, that's County Line was the most fun I'd had since Dukes. Yeah. And I mean, Django was a lot of fun, but that was one day. Django? Django. Django. Yeah, you don't even... Quentin Tarantino. You don't have to, it's not even a soft J, it's Django. Django. And you yeah, played a U.S. Marshal. Yeah. You were awesome, you came out. Gil Tatum. That's it. That's right. I want a buckboard over here. I want 12 rifles up there. Get that out here. And yeah, anyway. So when you work for someone like Tarantino, obviously a huge guy in the business, when you come on the set, I mean, does he tell you exactly what he wants you to do or does he give you freedom? Well, in this particular case, you know, it's a little bit odd with us because back in the day while we were doing the TV series, he was studying with James Best, the guy who played the sheriff. Mm -hmm. So he would come up and, and be in James's uh, class on Thursday night, and he would sleep in the classroom and then come to Warner Brothers the next day and hang out on the set. Really? Yeah, Jim would get him a pack. So he was like a kid? Or... It was 18, 19. Ah. Yeah. So he knew us from that, and he's always been a big guy for, you know, featuring, you know, like, um, shit. I can't remember anybody's name anymore. But lots of people. Yeah, a lot of TV people he puts yeah. in his films yeah. and, and uses them a lot. And, and it, it, it was so much fun. It was great. And it was a deal where actually the audition I did, because it's a one-trick pony, this guy. I'm, I'm the setup for the gag line. Mm -hmm. When he says, you know, you owe me 200 bucks. When I think I'm going to put him in jail and get him hung. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, Christoph Wallace finally says, you know, you owe me $200. This guy was a 
I'm a cabin wrestler. So uh, I, I did my audition exactly the way I would have done, you know, we do the speech in the movie. Right. So they're basically the same outfit, all black, and all my own sh stuff with my black boots and black hat. And you can sh say shit around YouTube. Yeah, okay. Stuff, so we're good. Anyway, but. Um, so now, you know. But I, if, if there's very little subtlety to that part, the most subtle thing I did was spit. <laughs> Obviously, a lot of success that you had is because of the Dukes. I mean, let's face it, you were on this huge show for however many, how many seasons? Five, six? Seven. Seven seasons. Parts. What was it like, sort of, you know, when you got the show, did you think it was going to be anything? And then when did you realize, holy crap, this is a show? Well, you never really have any idea about that. I mean, we knew right away that it was a hit. And when it first showed, it was top 20. And because there was nothing else like it. Right, and um, and it really it really was a singular show. Um, we knew it was a big hit uh, pretty early on, but I mean we were all kids. I mean John was eighteen, I was twenty seven. I'm I'm almost ten years older than him, but uh, I was when I got the part. I was like, oh God! But I just I just had a lead on a Broadway show. And I thought that's really where my future was. I, you know, probably would have won a couple of Tonys if I'd been lucky. But um, but you were still lucky. Well, you know, we had a blast doing it, and I've had a blast doing everything since. What does it do to your when you when you have a show that's that highly rated? What does it do to your daily life? I mean, everyone's probably saying, Nah, hey, not it, too much. It didn't, back not, even then, not really then. Wow, that's good. So you were able to maintain. Yeah, I mean, no, I get you get hassled a little bit, but not bad. That's I mean, good. yeah, and it wasn't like there, you know, there was no social media, none. But there was the Inquirer. <laughs> you did. We didn't really do anything that would invite anything other than you know, Sue Warner Brothers. Well, thank you for taking time to be on the show, and we, I wanted to tell you that before before we end the show. It's a Modelo Negra. <laughs> it's a it's a Mexican beer that I like very much. I'm, I'm just this is my only one of the night. And we're hoping that they're going to become a sponsor of the next episode. <laughs> no. But, um, so you played in our hometown where this show is broadcast from, Westerly, Rhode Island, Musquamica Beach, and you did a great show last summer, and we're hoping to bring you back next year. Um, but while you were... Man, you're covered with paisleys. You just noticed it. You are so stylish. Well, my wife bought the shirt for me. It's not really me. Oh, okay. It is me. I mean, I didn't actually do the thing. She bought it. Thanks, Christine. Top notch, babe. One time I interviewed Peter Cetera from Chicago. Right, right. He was dressed really hip, and I had this, like, yellow shirt. He's like, I said, well, you know, you're still, you know, cool. I, I wasn't saying anything about his age or anything. He goes, well, look at you in that yellow shirt. I'm like, oh, this interview's going. <laughs> but anyway, so while you were on stage, so the thing about Tom. I interviewed that, Peter Cetera, too. You did? I did. I had an interview show on, on uh, the Nashville Network back in the 90s. Wow. And he... He never wanted to talk about Chicago, obviously, but then he finally got around to he it. He was cool. Yeah, I, I thought mean, he was good. It was good. a Jason Chef yep. who took his place. That's right. Yeah. Holy, this guy's good. And Jason now Chef Chef's dad. Too. He is. And Jason Chef's dad was with uh, Elvis. With Elvis. Wow. He knows his music. So I know like two things. He's on. He's on stage. Well, so most artists when they come to play, you know, over the years we've discovered this, they want either like red M&Ms or they want a certain type of soda or whatever. And this guy was really cool about everything. So we didn't know what to put in his, in his trailer. And so we put like, you know, some Doritos and different I things. I like never that. got into the trailer. Well, that was the funny thing. So, <laughs> so while he's on stage, I said to the rest of my band, don't go in Wopat's trailer and don't touch his food. Well, the guitar player from my band went in and stole his Doritos. And a friend of mine, the bass player, took a picture of him in the Tom Wopat trailer stealing Tom's Doritos and caught him red-handed, like the high point. eating the chip. And so we wrote a song that someday we're going to debut All right. called Wopat's Doritos. There you go. So he's in that's trouble. Really, that's really sad. <laughs> that's, you're digging deep for material, man. That is, that's a long reach. Well, I tell you what, it came like instantly. Wopat's Doritos. All right, so I'll check it out. Thank you very much, Tom, for being here. Peace out. My All pleasure, right. man. Just too good a boy. Never mean him no harm. Who gets on never saw me in trouble with the law since the day they were born. Straighten the curves. Finding the hills. Someday, the mountain might go.
Hazardous interview. Y'all hang tight now.